I would, would love to hear your perspective um, uh, and share your thoughts around how your career in modeling helped shape your role as an entrepreneur and now a successful business mogul in your own right. Uh, well, Kelly, thank you so much. Thank you to you and to Aaron. And what a, a joy to be with you and to be with Emily. My, my goodness, mm -hmm. just uh, a, an incredible leader and CEO. So, so, so grateful. And um, in answer to your question, I, I loved hearing, I mean, you started at, at the kitchen table and that's where, where I began. Uh, modeling was not... Um, it was not a uh, part of my plan entered the modeling industry as a person committed to entrepreneurship and both business and design were always a passion. My first job, I was four years old and I sold rocks from my wagon, painted rocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were multifunctional. Uh, paper route was my first serious job. And um, Aaron mentioned Warren Buffett. Uh, we both had paper routes and that was how we, we connected initially um, and, and through our dear friend, Irv Blumpkin from Nebraska Furniture Mart. But the paper route, uh, my dad always said, Kathy, give 110%. If the customer expects the paper on the driveway, you put it on the front porch. So that was a foundation of learning to under promise and over deliver. And I've got to tell you still today, when our team has a presentation, if somebody does a great job, we say, you got it on the front porch. And, you know, you talk about resiliency, um, worked as a model. And the entire time I worked in that industry, I was trying and failing at other businesses. And if one of those earlier businesses had taken off, the modeling would have ended much sooner. Uh, the greatest gift from that long ago career was all the rejection. And I didn't appreciate it at the time, but what a gift. So when we began with a single pair of socks uh, banging on doors and people um, slammed doors in our faces and said all kinds of nasty things, it didn't bother me. I was so used to it. So no simply mm. means now we're talking. I'll come back tomorrow. You know, maybe your circumstances will have changed. Maybe the decision maker will no longer be you. Maybe someone else will be empowered or maybe you'll be in a better mood. And, and I encourage people when you, when you get a no, figure out why, because a lot of times criticism, I, it can be a gift and it's oftentimes it's wrapped in a really nasty package. I mean, I had, when I was working in the modeling industry, there were times when I, I took little acting jobs to help pay bills. And I tell people I'm not an actress, I've got the movies to prove it. Uh, <laughs> I had a, a critic once very publicly say I had a voice that could kill small animals and um, it didn't boost my confidence yet. I had to really listen to that criticism because there was some truth in it. I was 25 years old. I couldn't order a pizza on the phone. They thought I was a kid making a prank phone call. <laughs> so that's just an example of, okay, he's got a point. I've got to work on that if I'm going to be taken seriously. So I, I, I encourage people, don't let no stop you. Learn from criticism and don't let anybody put you in a box.